the crew will listen Saxon song. Run, run, son boy. Say Saxon they are come, eh. Run, 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 son boy. I do care. So before we get started, just to let you guys know in case you're wondering, these guys are all in their own social bubble. Testament to how close they are as a collective and as a sound. So please don't worry, no complaints. Guys, how are you first of all? Yeah, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Thank you so much for being here as well. Let's get straight into your journey. Now, Saxon Sound has been a prominent name in sound system culture for just under five decades, 44 years to be specific. Luckily, I'm from Harsden, so I've been in and around sound clash and sound system culture all my life. But there might be some people at home who are watching who don't know exactly what sound system is. So firstly, what is a sound system? And secondly, what sparked off the formation of what has now become a globally recognised sound? Me and Dennis here. My name's Masalid. This is Dennis Rowe. Um, we grew up as youths and um, his mum and dad had a food shop on Malpas Road, which was the road where we... I lived and, you know, we used to go to school, primary school, you know, that's where the link was and, you know, we saw the gap as, mm. yeah man, let's just do a little thing for ourselves, you know what I mean? Them signs used mm. to play in his mum's house. Okay. Mm. On, on the, the ground. Blue spot ground. Okay. Old school. Yeah. So mm. it really started like that. And I used to buy a record from, I was, I don't know, probably about five, six years old, I was buying records. <laughs> Yeah, because I was, the school I went to next door, there's a record shop. Okay. And Five years old. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Come on, think about it. No, no, no. I'm, Remember? I'm just saying, five years old. I, I, That's I, all. I, I left Mike Garden at seven, didn't I? And I was buying records when I was at Mike Garden. I hear you. When we started Mike Garden, I was buying records them times, isn't it? The record shop was next door. Is the record shop you're talking about, wasn't that one of the first places that sold um, records like internationally? Was that no, do you know what? There was three record shops okay. along there, you know? Okay. And then there was a studio, that's where Lovers Rock started, started. Okay. Mm. called Dip. So between Dennis Matumbi and Dennis Aris, yeah, they're the ones that really brought the Lovers Rock to the game. Cool. And that's the era when Saxon came up, in the Lovers Rock era. And the Lovers Rock at the time was running the place, really, you yeah. know? So, you know, as youths, you know, like when we was at school and things like that, you know, we used to listen chucker like yeah. cry a lot, so we whole son. <laughs> you know what I mean? Make, get the pillar and make a little <laughs> thing out of bed and, yeah. you know what I mean? Moon Just truck. lifting his boxes mm. was a proud, mm. you know what I mean? Proud thing for me yeah. to feel a part of yeah. Shaka Adol. I was lifting the boxes to get into nothing, <laughs> but you know what I mean? Yeah. So. And like you, he's still playing now. Yes. You know, so it's Shaka, longevity. Shaka will give me inspiration mm. to make my sound into what it is what it today. Is. To call yourself a sound system, you have to have a good sound. <laughs> yeah. Good MCs. Yeah. Like so. And good music. Yeah. yeah? So the sounds of today are just coming with the music. They, they might have money, they could be millionaires. They might have money and they just buy it and they think, oh yeah, nobody can test me, yeah? But in our day, we had, mu we had good music plus artists, so we could entertain. In those days, they was using like cord boxes, mm. which is 418 inches in one box. Mm. This was, you can imagine it's heavy. Sound system has changed, it's, um, it's more smaller yeah. in, in yeah, terms yeah. of the equipment that you yeah. use and the technology that has come out has enabled sounds, sounds to, yeah. you know, stop playing even records and to be playing CDs yeah. or, you know, playing it off the laptop. Yeah. So, you know, it's accessible. But yeah. then as real sound men that's coming from real sound, we want to hear the yeah. off the needle. Yeah. You understand what yeah. I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. When a man dropping the bass line, you want to see the place shake. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, everything is transistorized, but when we was growing up, it was a valve amp. Yeah. And you know, the longer the valve amp stay on, the hotter the valve amp <laughs> get, and the sweeter the bass drop. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, there's a change, and the, 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 the biggest change is everything has been condensed yeah, smaller. Yeah, smaller. Mm. But it's not the same sound, though. No, of course. Mm. Yeah, but yeah. remember, when we was playing in the houses, <laughs> it was, we started off with little boxes still. We didn't have like the quad boxes with the four speakers mm. straight away. Mm. 
we took our time and built our mm. things. We used to take some boards off of houses, <laughs> <laughs> rip off tall tannae, alter the um, school, schools, or petrol stations. Well, petrol stations yeah. You know, so that's how Saxon really, you know, started off. Now, the 1980s were arguably the most successful decade in reggae music in this country. But how did you, as a young sound at the time, differentiate yourself from all the other sounds who were, I guess, more established in the UK scene at that time? And what allowed you to cultivate that fan base that you have to now that's so prominent and strong? By building a team that was unique to Saxon. So when you came, you knew what you was getting. <laughs> you didn't come and hear that. It's not what you come for, you know what you come for. This is what I tell people all the time, yeah, say to listen. Where's the capital of reggae? Jamaica, huh? Jamaica, no. Okay, we'll leave it there. But <laughs> <laughs> no, we're gonna leave it there. No, but go, what's the capital? Let the me capital know, educate of, me. of reggae music is Northwest 10. The capital is wherever it's built, it's, it's the foundation, isn't it? Reggae music was not big in Jamaica in the 80s, not as big as it was in England. It was more r and It didn't get big in Jamaica until IFM came down. Well, what he's saying, so all the producers used to come to England mm -hmm. when they're making their tunes in Jamaica, yeah, and release, release a lot of them here and before never Jamaica. And yeah. never released from there. So okay. when he's saying about the capital, that's, that's why. The impact that was made into the world was Saxon, so there was nothing really, I mean, let's not get it wrong, Frontline was the sound. Mm. Yeah, Coxon was there, but like, Frontline was the sound. Watching Frontline and saying, okay, we'll do something different. And, and focus on what we was doing and stay real to what we was doing. Where a lot of people along the way, they get carried away and start doing other things. Yeah. We stayed focused. We built a team and just kept the team. And when we're looking at what Saxon done in the game, there will never be anyone that does it again. That's right. And it was never done before us. So when people say, oh, we signed, did you fear? Why? Why would I fear him? What is he doing what I'm not doing? Is he doing something different from me? If he's not, then I can't fear him. So there's nothing to be feared me. Because yeah. at the time as well, we didn't have the best sound. By far, yeah. But when it came to entertainment now mm. and excitement, we had like the DJs and they were, you know, the ammunitions to where, anywhere we played, it was once upon a time where a lot of clubs didn't even want us in their club because, <laughs> you know, they too, made this thing small. of thick wood. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, <laughs> when every, whenever, whenever the, the dance was finished, a lot of the buildings was mashed up as well. Yeah, mashed up, yeah. Because, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, they had a smell yeah, of liquid. Yeah, yeah. And that's where it you actually know? started so around Saxon. Yeah, okay. good. You know? So, 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 so it's your fault. You, 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 you would go to dance all now, and you'd see people licking the yeah. wood and standing yeah, floor. Yeah, that's what we said. started around Saxon. Okay, yeah. so it's your fault. One thought. of the men with the floor started <laughs> saying liquid, and there was no wood, start hitting the wall. And yeah, the whole dance yeah. was took over. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This was in Coliseum Suite. This is what the floor, so the right. floor was a wooden floor, yeah. so you can imagine what happened to the floor afterwards. Well, the evidence is in the coffin. And they're getting the bills. And they're getting the bills, you know? Because, you know, we did look up to sound, you know? Because at the end of the day, we was just youths. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We was the youngest, one of the youngest sounds yeah, 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 coming yeah, up. Yeah. So obviously, like Coxons and, mm -hmm. you know, like Frontline and them and them, I, I would admit that they had more tunes than what we, we had. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But at the same time, we took our time and built our mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, when we put everything together now, you it's know. Formidable. That's yeah. where the vibes and everything, you know, a lot of places we went, if people never see our van pull up or certain things, people's outside, they're waiting for us <laughs> to come into the dance. It's not like now. You know what I mean? Yeah. We was like a football team, like people supporting <laughs> our thing. Serious, serious. You know what I mean? Right. We didn't right. even right. bring right. a lot of crowds. Right. Right. We didn't bring a lot of crowds right. to right. certain places where we was going. We used to walk you know what I mean? The most but I tell you people. what, <laughs> we made the crowds yeah. after, before the dance was finished. Mm. We would take away a lot of the other opponents' crowds. Yeah. You understand? Just with the excitement and the energy, what we yeah. had. Say it a better way. The other opponent <laughs> lost their crowd, <laughs> gave it away. Or put it this way. <laughs> or put it this way. Imagine then you come from an area and you've got a sound that represents your area and is well known in your area. But then when Saxons turn up, listen to this. The whole crowd, your crowd, is now booing you and telling you to lock off. Yeah. 
and how I would that feel? And I've, and I've heard about you doing that in other yeah, countries as well. Yeah, yeah. In Jamaica, in well, New York. Well, I'm saying every sound yeah, still. No, not every sound, sound but yeah, it has happened. It's, it's documented. Yeah. It's documented. people like Unity and them man, them from North, they had their crowd and they was yeah. loyal. Exactly. You know what yeah, I mean? Exactly. So they was a little bit of a fight. To, yeah. But we still won over most majority of them. Never walk with no problems. Ruddy rich get mad and go solve them. No problem. No, no problem. No problem. No, no problem. Reapers never walk. Now, it was the early Saxon MCs like um, Peter King and Papa Levi who pioneered and trademarked that unique um, MC in style that is called Fast Chat. How did that MC in style influence your brand? A lot of the times, it was like a family. And when we're traveling, we was traveling seven days a week. So when we're traveling, somebody might say something in the minibus and Sandy or Junior and Colonel might put pen to paper and they're writing this lyrics up. And they might even get to the dance. And they, 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 you, they'll be meditating in the van mm -hmm. before we get where we're going, like if we're going to Birmingham. And by the time we touch in Birmingham, they've got like a verse and they might even come in the dance and yeah, chat at the thing. So it was like headline news. Something could just happen like... You see, you see our thing with, with, with the MC game, as one of the MCs then, one of the main ones then, our thing was, We'd grown up and listened to the Uri's, the Iroys, the Tapazukis, the Justich, you know, so we're listening. Then you had all the yard cassettes coming over here with all the biggest MCs, then whether it was Johnny Ringo, whether it was um, Brigadier Jerry, or whether it was um, General Echo. So it's not like we weren't privy to what was going on. Mm -hmm. The difference with us was putting pen to paper now. We weren't chatting about something, what was happening in America right. when I ain't been to America. Mm -hmm. I ain't chatting about what's happening in Jamaica when I ain't been to Jamaica. Yeah. I'm chatting what's happening in front Brand of me. New, yeah. yeah, seeing is believing. Here's the Kianga Quarter yeah. Center. Yeah. yeah, so my our thing was write reality. And the more you write reality, and the reality that you're writing is what you're facing either in your home, with your friends, with your so family. Sooner or later, everyone else is going to gravitate to what you're talking because they're feeling the same pressure what you're feeling mm -hmm. remember we was growing up in 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 um england in the 80s we're just coming out of school so we're young looking nippers but then the streets wasn't lined like how the books was telling us True. so we had to find the reality and the reality was talking the reality seeing it seeing it for what it was and actually putting it to pen to paper then you're dispersing it to people and then from dispersing it, you, you, you'd have older brothers or sisters or elder generations would come up to us and shake our hands and they're saying, guess what? You've taught me something tonight that I didn't even know about at all. Mm -hmm. And that was because of writing, but not just writing, studying. This is one of the main man, d row behind the MCs. He would tell us, be careful what you pick up and write and be careful, be careful what you pick up and read because not every book that you're reading is giving you the true representation of where you're coming from and what's going on in life. Mm -hmm. So some books have to discard, mm. burn up with fire, <laughs> yeah, and start mm. get some real book. Go to some black bookshops and getting some original books that is writing and, and telling you about your real history. So then our writing became somewhat different. Mm. If you can imagine watching Malcolm X and he was radical in it, revolut. That's mm. how he was, mm -hmm. yeah, and you see. Up until we started to travel, myself as an MC, started to go around the world and see the different cultures in different countries, then I realised, you know, what about the half that's never been Bit told, told, yeah? So therefore, we'll put pen to paper and what you see, you write and you put it into your lyric and then you chat it on the mic or, you know, on a stage or on record because it's about edifying the unedified. Mm -hmm. That's what, that was our motto. Mm -hmm. You know, some guys were crazy to go dance and chat about girls or mm. this or that. <laughs> nah, that never really rate with us around here mm. at all. We're, we're, we're more about edifying our people and getting them on that conscious level, that mm. conscious tip. And it spread throughout England because mm. if you're speaking something that 99.9 .9 of these youths are going through, even now, yeah. before long, they're all going to gravitate to it. Sure. That's what happened. You know what I mean? And your name's going to be spoken about in, 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 in ways which maybe you wouldn't even thought about. Yeah. We've had the, the Black Lives Matter movement and the COVID pandemic. 
And I feel like that has made racism in all its forms be under a new line of scrutiny. Mm -hmm. Now, going back, you know, you had the rebel generation, as they called it. Back then, how did you combat discrimination and Babylon within a, 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 a racially charged Britain? Well, that time, in, in that, that time, time, yeah. It was not much different to what's going on now. Mm. So when people are saying the blanket's been pulled off, no, it's always been there. When we was 11, 13, 14, maybe 15, in October, the, the clocks would go back. So it gets dark around them times quickly. So a black man couldn't walk through the streets by himself. So this is when uh, they was gangs, but we used to have to walk around uh, in posses or gangs as well, because we'd be getting chased. So now the aftermath is the foolishness what's going on now. Before Saxon, any time you picked up the newspaper, it was crime when you saw a black person. Then we came and changed that. Now you'll see some guys that are just real guys. They just, you know, come to do real things and say real things. But so in your opinion, it hasn't really gotten better anyway? No, it's not got better. It's got even worse now. If we talk about racism, we shouldn't be talking from the top shelf. Mm. We should be talking from the middle shelf. Mm. So yeah, we're living in a dangerous time now, brother. You see, well, what I would say, you know, in them times, as youths growing up, we face certain things that some of these youths would never face at all. That's and it's fact. just like our parents coming over here, we're, we're, yeah. they'll face things that we would never face. When our parents in rush, in. Yeah? Growing up and coming through that period, you had to be a militant. If you weren't militant, you're going to get walked all over. So when you look at all these footages that you see of all the riots and everything that went on, the riots only went on really because of the racism. Let's be, let, let, let's be honest. Fact. You know what I mean? And fact. Growing up in Brixton, right, and being in all of the riots then, the riots, as it's been portrayed, it was fist to fist, it was face to face. It wasn't you standing 20, 30 yards in front of a flipping petrol bomb or something. No, it was that personal. So, the only way then you're going to combat that then, you know, as a young person growing up, especially as a young black man, at the time, the media that we have now, that a lot of these youths can go to college, go to university, was not available for us, mm -hmm. yeah? So our means was music. Yeah. Drama, whereas you see all these drama schools going on, there was very, there was drama schools, but very little black actors getting that, that climb up the ladder. You understand what I'm saying to you? For me and for us, I would say, you know, because music was our outlet, music was, was, was in us, we channeled everything into our music. Mm. And by channeling all of our energy, our thoughts, you know what I mean, our creativity, our vision into music, it's helped to expand us to a greater height that we didn't know, but at the same time, it's helped to inspire a oh, generation, generation of youths. Right. For us, nothing ain't changing, though. There's a saying, Babylon released the chain, but then my use they break. And it's the same thing. Yeah. yeah, you've taken the shackles off, but now it's a psychology yeah. war. So we understand that as well because no, we're no, old enough and we're wise war. enough. Yeah, we're, we're old enough and we're wise enough to, to understand that and to relate to it mm -hmm. because we've lived through it. Yeah. And every time society's changed, listen to this, Saxons had to change as well. Crazy. From Lover's Rock mm -hmm. to Roots mm -hmm. to Dance Art mm -hmm. to, to, to Grime to Drum and mm -hmm. you name it. And the only difference is now is that the amount of um, technology that it's about, hmm. I would have expected yeah, yeah. Uh, a, a lot of things to be on a higher standard but guess what it's not you keep finding everyone keeps Water reverting down. back round to the 80s to find out what it was like in the 80s when they go back to the great 60s so <laughs> you tell me yeah. i think a very important question um to get your honest opinion about is what do you truthfully think the future of sound clashing looks like and even just reggae sounds in general we've not clashed lately because the disrespectful things that is being said by the mcs who's controlling the newer MCs, I should say. Because in our day, there you could, you, there was a certain standard. You don't oh, curse yeah. somebody about their family or their mother or anything. You know, we don't bring that into the thing. If you're dissing a man, you're dissing a mm -hmm. man. We last entered, our last world clash was in 94, which we won, yeah? And we said, we're just gonna take it back on our entertainment thing. And the breed of different sounds just came up. Once the Americans got all of it, because the Americans were clashing before. It was like a mother this, a mother that. And if you're going to curse me about my mother, you're, you're getting personal. You understand? Because <laughs> my mother don't play sound system. That's right. You know? And we look at it as a, a woman. 
I come from a woman, you come from a woman, all of us come from a woman. We don't disrespect women. If your music is good, your music's going to talk, you know? You shouldn't have to go and violate and start talking about somebody's family. Mm -hmm. And if the sounds of today don't get this thing right, something bad's going to happen. Mm. They need to clean up their act. When Dennis or Lloyd was talking about the MCs and now that's the highlight on the sound. We had singers. The as difference well. in the, the, the difference with when we was doing our thing compared to the MCs now. The MCs now, let's not, let's not get this twisted. They ain't chatting lyrics. They're shouting on the microphone. Put up the fire, da, da, da. Yeah. And for me, <laughs> that's not an MC. It's better you say you're a DJ, a dirty drum crop. A MC is a man that's on the mic, as you lot call it now, so spitting lyrics. Yeah, but you're spitting, you know, something which is relevant to the people. Yeah. Just telling this sound, sound man for luck off. Yeah. That's not an MC for me at all. So I understand the concept of what they're bringing now, but it's a complete different formula from what it used to be. It's now become... It's entertainment, but it comes in like, you know, you go to a freak show sometimes and people just put on things just for sake of putting on things. That's what it's become. If you've got two good sounds, you don't need no more than that. Yeah, you don't need five and, and six and, and when I was cutting dubs, I still cut dubs now, but not as much as mm. I used to. I used to cut a dub for Saxon, even without calling Saxon's name. Mm. I don't even need a MC to, 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 to go on that, go on the mic. You know what I mean? Music I talks. was playing music and letting it talk mm -hmm. to the crowd. You understand what I'm saying? Now, it's changed because what it is, it's the mic man who's the proper yeah, a lot one of who's, who's, to the mic man. who's doing it. It's not even about records no more. It's not even about playing the dub no more. You know what I mean? And, 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 and what it is with the dubs as well, man ain't even voicing dubs. I used to voice a dub for three, three and a half minutes. Now, a man's voicing it, just two verses and yeah. Let me just say finished. something. <laughs> you know? Because a lot of them are splicing tunes now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so splicing is a lot the, the, in the, the game. The splicing tunes the are not even, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're finding an artist to yeah, sound like an artist. A big word and splicing the, the tunes. Okay. So okay. that's why they won't play it for over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're okay. frauds. <laughs> you might meet somebody who's got a sound system. And this is how you get yourself other other gigs and everything. Mm. But now, it's just like, everybody's online and just mm. press a button and the tune just goes, <laughs> no one goes to record shops, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? All right. So there's, this no, this there's no, there's no com communication like that. Cause I might not know a certain sound system owner and I might go to a record shop and he's there. And I'm the man who's so real selling the records saying. to say, oh, you know, this is Saxon. And he says, oh, I've, I've been looking, I've been looking for you. I've been trying to get contact with you. And that's how you get a contact and you can get things going, moving, oh, you know. Mm -hmm. But there's no, there's no community because everyone's just in their house, mm -hmm. in their own bubble now, mm -hmm. pressing a button, downloading tunes. If, if you are interested in music and if you know anything, even, even if it's not about sound system culture, if you know anything about reggae music, so music roots, reggae music, love as well. People will know who you are. Mm. And every year we see you at Notting Hill Carnival. Even this year with Notting Hill Carnival being digital, I still see you lot <laughs> doing, your thing, doing your thing, do you know what I mean? And I think that's testament to, to, to your staying power, your longevity. Mm. Well, listen guys, it has been amazing to speak to you. I, I've gained a deeper insight. I understand, I've been corrected on a few occasions as well. And that's fine, that's what I'm here for. Yeah. Education is very important. Mm. So guys, please, Let's give a round of applause for Saxon Sound System, please. Thank you, much love, much love.